Hello everybody, I'm George Runkel, President of Runkel Consulting Incorporated, and I am here to talk about ship and container design. And what I'm going to go through today is basically how we do a standard ship and container design. And this is, as an example, I'm using a very small project, but it doesn't matter if the project is, you know, 30 containers or two containers together, the procedures are always the same. The reason you do that is if you do it the same way every time, you're less likely to miss a step or to make an error. And you always want to be careful when you're building buildings, uh, designing buildings for structures, because an error can cause some major problems in the future. All right, so the first thing we've got here is what I'm showing here on the screen right now. And this is a concept drawing that the client sent me. I am a structural engineer, I'm not an architect, so I depend upon the client to either give me their concept of what they want to do or the client or myself to contract with an architect to prepare the basic layout. In some cases I may contract directly with the architect, the architect feeds me this information and then I go on to the design. Okay, so we've got the concept from the client. Now the next thing I'm doing, and the steps can change in order depending on the project, but generally what I'll do is I'll build a three-dimensional model just so I can get an idea of what's going on. So let me uh, get around here on the computer so I can rotate this model a bit. And this, what's important about this model, this is done in a program called Bentley RAM Elements. And the reason I use this specific program is because I can uh, um, model the specific elements of containers. See, most computer programs you get off the shelf will have for the steel members, standard steel members that are, uh, sorry about that, Alexa, uh, computer, shut up, computer, stop. Isn't it wonderful when technology does stuff like that? I'm not re-recording this. I'm sorry. I'm done with that. You just have to listen to it. I hate Amazon Alexa someday. All right, here we are. This is basically a C channel, but I had to model it specifically for the container. Uh, this is a specific way container bottom rails are done. And here's another one that is totally different from what you get as normal fabricated steel sections. This is what they call the front corner of the container. Containers, the front is not what we would normally consider the front. We would normally consider the front to be the side with the doors, but that's not the side that faces the truck. And let me there go back here and show you. All right, if you get a container up on a truck, this part is the doors that's on the back. This is to the front. So we always call this side of the container the front. Here's our lower rails. Up here is tube shapes, which we call the top rails. Side panels, front panel, doors, top panels, and then you have cross members, cross members underneath. And then this thing right here, which I don't know if this is going to show up being all black, but this towards the front of the truck goes over the hitch. It's called the gooseneck. Okay, anyway, a little bit of terminology. So anyway, I built the, the container model. And this, oftentimes the structural parts of the model are done with, out of experience. Like in this one here, I know I've got a long span that we've got down the center that's got to be carried. I, I've, you, you can't, let me show you here this a little better. You can't open the entire inside of containers because it's just too long of a span. That's a 40 foot span. So we have to have at least one column in there. I prefer two. Makes it a lot easier, but I'll work with whatever you give me. And I have to reinforce the top rail. And let me show you how I did that. It is, again, a custom section. And it's reinforced. This is upside down. The tube is reinforced with an angle here that's welded to it. 
it works out really well. We've done it over and over again in Phoenix, and it's a very simple solution. And uh, here's the what the top rail looks like before modifications. It's not really meant to be structural originally when it's put in place. It's meant to be a place to weld your side panel and your top panel to when you're making the overall container. Okay, so anyway, we've got the RAM model and we've got the custom members made. I cannot understate how hard it was to do the custom members. Each one is its own code. I'll have to talk about that in another video. Okay, next step, what I've got to do is I'm going to find my wind and seismic information. So we'll go back here to my favorite program, Bluebeam, and we go in here to a website from the American Society of Civil Engineers. And I enter in the location, which in this case, simply Buckeye, Arizona. I don't have any other information, but that's close enough. Puts us in roughly to where we're going to with good enough information for wind load and uh, seismic data. Arizona is easy to design for seismic and wind, to be honest with you. The speed of the wind, 101 miles per hour, is really low. Just for comparison, here in Georgia, we designed for 115 miles per hour. In Florida, you're up at 160, 170 miles per hour. And your forces on, on the structure from the wind go up with the square of the speed of the wind. So it forms a curve that goes like that. So 115 miles per hour presents a lot more force on a building than 101. But we still have to design according to whatever the local criteria is. And here's the seismic criteria. I won't get into this, uh, but it basically they don't have earthquakes to speak of in Arizona. But we have to work with it. So next step, I've got that. And I want to calculate my wind loads. This is what I do. I have this program here that I wrote, and it is written in a uh, system called SMath, which is a uh, freeware version of, uh, or shareware, I guess I should call it shareware version of MathCAD. MathCAD is really horribly expensive. SMath is whatever I donate towards the guy that writes it. Every now and then I send him money in PayPal because it's a nice program and it's updated from other people putting their own add-ons into it, much like Linux is. So it, it really works out pretty well. All I do here is a lot of the stuff uh, has already been pre-entered in. I'll enter in the size of the, contain, uh, the building, like in this case it's two containers, so it's 40 foot long and it's going to be 16 foot wide. And the height, it's basically one container high, nine and a half feet, so I'll give it 10. And then I have to add in here the elevation above sea level, which I took from that ASCE report. And then it does all its various calculations, and it tells me I've got 17 miles per hour, 17 PSF wind load on this, and I see that there is a glitch that's showing up here. And what this is, is, is the variable's wrong. But I'll fix that later. No problem. Anyway, we know what our loads are, 17 PSF. And then the next thing I need to do is I have to develop what is known as the um, response spectra. And I go in to take the stuff out of the ASCE report, put it in over here in the sp spreadsheet, and it calculates all these numbers for me take my word for it. It doesn't affect the structure much in Arizona, but again, it's a requirement and it's good to do the same process no matter where the building is, no matter what the forces are, because if you don't do it, that leads to sloppiness and you don't want that. So we've got that. Now our next step we've got, which is a little bit more important, is I have to go here. I'm sorry, but the light's in my eyes as I'm trying to find the uh, different things here. This is a modular building going in Arizona. So I have to prove to the state that it doesn't overturn in a wind. So I apply the wind load on here and that's 17 miles per hour wind load. 
and it gives me a factor of safety of like seven. In other words, it's not going to roll over, which I didn't think it would. Two wide containers, very little chance of opening. And then this one, don't even ask me to explain this. This is a very complex program that came out of a plan reviewer's refusal to accept the results from RAM elements. He considered it a black box and he didn't like it. So I developed this incredibly complex frame analysis that tells you that containers are stiff. So take my word for it, it shows the containers are stiff. So we've got that done. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to feed all this stuff into our RAM elements model. So we'll go ahead and run this real fast. Go up here. I want to turn off Again, I've got this light right in my eyes. This is killing me, but I'm going to keep going. We're not going to change it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go over to our set up a floor here, and this is going to be one floor, and then we're going to put our wind load on here. And our wind pressure is 17 pounds per square foot. Oh, first, I guess we should apply it to the right place. Wind load at X. 17. 17. And then we want the wind load to run in the other direction. There, you'll see an error on the model. That's because it was all, this model is from another project also. So we can see an arrow appears in the center of gravity and or center of pressure, I should say. Somebody's going to say, no, it's not the center of gravity. And it's saying F sub Z is 140 pounds. And that doesn't look right. F of X is 17 pounds. Ah, you know what we did wrong? I went in here and I've got the load just on this little narrow slice up here. That's not right. So we go back in here. This is where you have to know what you're doing and catch an error that's happening. So we'll select members connected to selected nodes and this is why when you do calculations, of course, you look at your numbers as you go on and see if they make sense. So 17, 17, yeah, that looks right, 2,500 pounds, okay. And we'll go here to here, and wind and Z, 6120, yeah. yeah. That's correct. Okay, now we've got correct loads. All right, so next step we've got to do is we have to do our seismic. And it has to calculate the uh, center of mass, which it just did. That is important, and I'm not even going to explain that one. I had a client actually ask me, why did it do certain stuff? And I'm like, well, if you want me to go into this, this is where I come in. I'm going to go in this. It took a semester graduate school to understand this whole system. And I still have to look at the book to refresh it in my head how this works. So I'm not going to explain it here. All right, so I'm going to put this uh, response spectra in here for this site. Okay, everything's in, and then we run an analysis, and hopefully everything will go through fine. Now, this is what I think is pretty cool here, is good rule of thumb is what's easy for a computer to do is hard for a human and vice versa. The computer couldn't tell that something looked wrong with the forces, but I could. Look what it did. It saw 4,000 equations in, what do I say, 
seven seconds. All right, so we've got the analysis done, and then the next part is the design, which again is finite element programs always use two steps. Anyway, here we go. And we're designing. Meanwhile, while we're doing this, we're going to prepare. We'll go back and look at this. So prepare the drawing. This is done in 3D. And I'm using Autodesk Revit. And here's the model in 3D, which I've cut into it so I could see what the heck was going on. We'll go ahead and change our views. Go here. And I want to um, orient to a view. Let's go to our ground floor view. And here we are. And here's a view in 3D. Now, this is exceedingly important to me to be able to do this in three dimensions because it allows me to visually look at how I have designed this and make sure I've got everything covered. I've got my foundations and notice we've got this long span on the bottom. You just can't carry that for 40 feet. So I've had to put two foundations on the bottom. One is under the column. I hid the column up here in the wall. And I've got my walls in. Got all my doors and windows. Looks pretty good. I put the door in the back here to avoid having the gooseneck in the way of the plumbing. In a further video, we'll talk about some of the pitfalls of designing with containers as far as plumbing and HVAC. So it all looks pretty good. And this drawing is just about ready to go to the client. I have the structural drawing probably about 95% done. It com it's composed of you know your first sheet, general notes, foundation and floor plan, a structural floor plan, and uh, the roof stiffening details and foundation details, connections roof and wall sections this is kind of important to show you know all my uh, insulation now this is a little unusual I've done some of the things that are normally under the architect because these are very simple modular buildings and I've taken over some stuff that's kind of in the boundary between architecture and engineering and here's our elevations the sides and ends and this is basically for submittal to the state of Arizona for approval as a modular building. And their requirements are pretty stiff. Okay, so let's go back to our RAM elements model. And it's done the design calculations. And let's see how we did. So we'll go up here to view. And I'm going to squint my way through this uh, bright light I put up here. And uh, let's see our status. And everything is green and yellow, which is good. And uh, so the building holds up. And I want to see what does it do during a windstorm. If I got my wind going in the way of all these different things that are on the computer drive me nuts sometimes. All right, wind going in the direct, uh, pushing against the long side, full force of the wind. How much does it move? Well, not a whole lot. What is that? A uh, thousandth, one ten thousandth of an inch, one and a half ten thousandths of an inch. That's not a whole lot of movement. Containers are incredibly stiff. So that's our basics on how we design with a container, no matter how big or how small. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please give it a like, and please subscribe to my channel, and I'll cover other areas of design in upcoming videos.